All right, what's up? What's good, everyone? This is the kid DC Wrestling back once again with another video. And for the first time, quite a while, I'm doing a triple upload today. That's right. We've got this video right now, and then we got the AW Fighter Fest Night One preview and predictions. That's going to be coming out later this afternoon. And then, of course, later on tonight, we got NXT. We got a NXT Women's Title Match. That should be good. But right now. Uh, you guys have been really liking the reaction so far, and I decided, you know what, let's do another one. Today, we're going to be reacting to Planet Productions, and he has a video entitled, It's Starting to Make Sense Now. And judging by the thumbnail, clearly with Logan Ball, Triple H with the point, and Stephanie in it, seems like for the most part, he's going to be talking about Logan Paul and, and his signing and how it's a pretty much a good thing. So I don't want to waste any time. Um, let's get right into it and, um, yeah, let, let's just see how this goes. So yeah, make sure y'all subscribe and like, and yeah. I sat at the WWE, the executive chair, office with Vince McMahon and Kong the other day, looked at it straight in the eyes and said, I am the host of the number one podcast in the world, Vince. And he said, nothing. What a warm welcome to the WWE from his new boss. This might seem like an ordinary signing, but it's much more significant. Signing Logan Paul shows that WWE... Fight was wild with Mayweather and uh, like Rondo, Logan. Or former NFL football player slash current podcaster Pat McAfee. That match is insane, man. As well as USA Olympic gold medals in Gable Stevenson. Where, where's Gable Stevenson at? Like, he, because he was at Mania, and they was like, he got drafted at Raw. He showed up at Mania. He was literally standing side by side with the CEO, Stephanie. So it's like, when when's, um, when's he going to show up? Is he gonna be? Is he is he gonna be the special guest referee at SummerSlam? Like, what was was Gable Stevenson on too? Because it's like, I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I was just questioning, like, you know, I don't know. And then you have a complete MMA killer in Valerie Loretta. She's a killer, but boy, is she a baddie, bro. She is a very beautiful woman. Athletes aren't the only ones on their radar either. They're going for megastar entertainers like this guy. There's clearly been a major change in who WWE has been scouting and signing over the last few years. The company has shifted its focus to athletes and entertainers with star power. It is best for business. From a statistical standpoint, WWE is on track to have its most successful year ever. Pay-per-view viewership has been reaching an all-time high, and social media numbers are out of this world. The yep. sign that Rogan Paul seems to be at the beginning of a complete transformation for the WWE. As of today, I have been released from my WWE contract. April 15th, 2020 is a meaningful date. This is when the WWE plans the seeds that kick-started the massive changes that were to come. The promotion had a layoff of dozens of employees due to the uncertainty... I was pretty crazy day. Superstars were getting released left and right. Releases, there might be another reason. When you look at the people that were let go, a decent number of them were hired from the independent wrestling scene. The trend continued when more indie wrestlers were being fired within the next 18 months. The release stars had something in common, though. They started their careers in the indies and were a part of Triple H's NXT. Another compelling development around this time was the hire of the new president, Nick Khan. It's no coincidence that there's been a comprehensive overhaul after he joined WWE. This is the man responsible for everything, and he's not even trying to hide it. Yep, he's literally telling y'all. No best way to make money online that no Nick Khan is taking over. It's Nick Khan's world now. Yes. How would you describe the current state of NXT? It's going to have a whole new feel. And we believe because a lot of the indie wrestlers, if you will, we don't want to just keep doing that same thing. We want to look elsewhere for great young talent. 
there you have it. The president openly admitted that WWE is no longer interested in bringing mm. in any <laughs> guys. This is how the WWE has always been. Big sweaty men were heavily scouted in the 80s. They looked for great character work and charisma in the 90s. And WWE pretty much signed anyone in the 2000s from NCAA athletes to WCW legends. Mr. McMahon wanted to completely dominate the market after the Monday Night War. Triple H is the one who tried changing the system when he took over the talent relations position in the 2010s. For an unexplainable reason, Hunter was laser focused on only signing indie wrestlers. Yeah, that's that true. Was the issue. Triple H was handing out contracts to professional wrestlers in a sports entertainment company. Because of that disconnect with WWE's audience, many of these NXT experiments could not. And that is why most of the NXT talent that fit that just most of them did not do good on the main roster. And that is why really the only people coming out of NXT that really had a really good chance and actually succeeded on the main roster were homegrown talent. Were homegrown talent. Lexa Bliss, Baron Corbin, you know. We have mo when you saw most of indie talent that have no character, no charisma. It's also a big play as well. But I don't want to keep pausing for you guys. <laughs> Just my input. everything associated with it and modified the direction of the future signings. Why have there been so many releases this year? Ultimately, what's looked at is what works for us and our product at that moment in time. Is this person for us? Going to move the needle. Indie wrestlers aren't working for the WWE anymore. World Wrestling Entertainment is going back to their roots, signing athletes and superstars that can move the needle and transcend the brand to a wider audience and catch more eyes. Anybody that does not fit the system is moving to their new home, AEW, and that's perfectly fine with the WWE. In fact, Nick Khan couldn't be less bothered about it. He loves it. <laughs> he loves Is it. Is that not a weird thing to see develop in front of your eyes? Have you ever seen me talk about or think about any competitor mm -hmm. in my mind? Never. So our decisions are based on what's best for us and whatever anyone else does with that, good for them. Nick Khan is not concerned about these indie wrestlers or their arrival in AEW because he doesn't consider them competition <sighs> at all. For so long, WWE struggled to keep their general audience and their hardcore fan base happy simultaneously. But with everything Khan said in that interview, as well as the releases, it is clear that WWE decided to go all in on sports entertainment. They're no longer going to appeal to that hardcore Ooh. audience. This doesn't mean that it's the end for all indie wrestlers. It's not going to be the case. Guys like Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and Seth Rollins have done and Kevin Owens looked kind of gray there. In WWE. But you should expect less of those signings and more of the Logan Pauls, Ronda Rousey's, and Gable Stevenson's of the world. Judging by the recent success, I would say they made the right decision. WWE needed to do this because it was really best for business to propel the company to reach new heights. The things we did are what it takes to make this place the juggernaut that it is. Mm, Triple H going true. in. <laughs> The new business approach is absolutely necessary in keeping that juggernaut alive. The data and stats don't lie. I took every single televised Raw and SmackDown segment slash match from the last six months that was posted onto YouTube, which gave me an average of 646,000 views per video. That will be our baseline number. We'll be able to determine top draws based off of this number. The more views, the better. To put things into perspective, I gather data for some superstars. For example, videos with AJ Styles are below average, generating around 505,000 views. That is one of the greatest wrestlers to ever lace up a pair of boots and is a little more than 100,000 views short of the average. Sami Zayn is another former indie wrestler who falls below the average at 523,000 views. Even though he's done a splendid job at perfecting his character, he still lacks that drawing power. Becky Lynch has some more clout compared to her colleagues as she's slightly above the baseline number, typically bringing in 750,000 views per video. Mm. Pat McAfee has been in the business 
for a couple of years already surpassed these veterans with a solid 752,000 view average. It's crazy. As we continue to rise through the rankings. You'll Not see even a wrestler. Just Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins come close to a million views. And above everyone here, you've got Logan Paul well beyond their numbers with an average of 1.2 million views. Th that's kind of sad, though. Like, the fact that a YouTuber is bringing in more views than most of your top guys, that's, like, it's kind of sad. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I get it from a business standpoint. It's good. But still, that's, like, dang, that's kind of sad. Like, these wrestlers been here for years. Logan Paul's been here for, like, six months. And he's already, like, power social media. I'll tell you. This, it can definitely buy some views. This isn't even the top of the mountain. There's still so much more to climb. Ronda Rousey is still a household name. Of course. Even, even though she sucks on the mic. 2.02 2 million views. The undisputed champion is performing marginally better at 2.3 Of course. Because he's the tribal chief. He's the head of the table. Bad Bunny he's the GOAT. He drew more views than the company's number one guy when he showed up on WWE TV. Yeah. 2.4 million views. He's got a large a fan base. WWE is going to do everything in their power to sign him to a contract at some points. It's an impressive number, but Bad Bunny is not number one. Mm. At the very peak of the mountain is a beast that delivers numbers. The alpha male of our species, right Brock, Brock Lesnar. I wonder why Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar happens so often. Just take a look at this graph. While I'll always show love to my indie favorites like AJ Styles and Sami Zayn, they just don't measure up to talent like Logan Paul, Ronda Rousey, or Brock Lesnar. The fact of the matter is that the data proves WWE is making smart analytical business decisions to grow their audience and appeal to a wide demographic. Cool. A house or a laptop? Which one do you think is worth more? Well, definitely not. I'll tell house. you what is uh, worth more. Millions. Skipping the video. Google Trends is a good way to evaluate what's popping and being searched in the digital media. Well, I apologize for that, guys. I do. Logan Paul to top <laughs> WWE names such as Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton, and Seth Rollins, he's outperformed each of them. As for Bad Bunny, he's literally on a different planet in terms of his popularity. It's not even fair to compare them to him. Ronda Rousey might not be as trendy as Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar, but she still ranks higher than Orton and Rollins. Mm. WWE has become obsessed with trends because they're looking to improve their demographics, specifically the category of age. According to Dave Meltzer, the average age for a WWE fan is around 53 years old. Mm. That number needs to decrease for the company to sustain longevity and become uh. more attractive for new advertisers. <laughs> a freaking Undertaker, young dude. Superstars like Logan Paul is a genius approach. The newest member of the roster already broke the record for the most likes on WWE's Instagram with over 1.2 million likes. His tweet about the breaking news got over 200,000 likes on Twitter, making it viral. We don't see wrestling tweets reach those numbers. The guy also generated 5.8 billion views on YouTube, and a majority of those views are relatively young people. If WWE wants to lower that average age, this signing was 100% the right call. To be completely honest with you, I respectfully believe Logan Paul is going to help bridge that gap between the WWE and pop culture world. This is a massive deal. With more signings like this, wrestling is one step closer to becoming mainstream again. That's why I'm in support of Logan Paul, Ronda Rousey, Pat McAfee, and anyone else who wants to cross over to WWE for that matter. I'm perfectly satisfied with WWE choosing this direction. I'd rather go along for the ride than miserably complain. What makes the yeah. situation even better is the presence of AEW. Yeah. WWE can focus on sports entertainment while AEW can present the art of pro wrestling. Mm, tell them, Plata. that fans are involved in a civil war because it would be so much more fun if we just appreciated both companies together. Mm, tell them, Plata. Tell, tell them fans on... Tell them, tell them wrestling fans on Twitter that. Tell them, tell them wrestling fans fans on Twitter that got WWE in for life and AEW for life in their bios. Tell them that. <laughs> they ain't gonna listen. WWE, whether you like it or not. They ain't. Logan Paul signing with them might have initially seemed random, but it's starting to make sense now. Woof, you know...
Plana, I've always been neutral with Plana as a YouTuber. There'll be YouTube, there'll be there'll be videos he'll put out where I'm like, eh, I don't know about that one, Chief. And then he puts videos like this where it's like, dang, dude, like, you kind of putting out some heat on this one, man. You putting out some gold on this one, bro. I bet you'll probably be more likable as a wrestling creator if we put out more videos like this. But, yeah, this is a really good video. And at the end of the day, man, it's kind of what Superkick Studios says while they're doing Brock and Roman again. It's a business. WWE is about making money. And it really, shouldn't that be the mindset of all wrestlers? Like, would you rather be making green or would you rather just want to continue to impress the internet fans and wrestling observers by putting on long five-star matches? You know, I just want to put that out there. No offense to wrestling. I'm not saying, re you know, all wrestling fans are bad, you know. But for the, the majority is. But anyways, um, yeah, it's a business. Logan Paul should be good. Now the 10-year-old kids are going to want to see him wrestle. Um, and yeah, it's great that we got a company like AEW. So now, you know, fans can see that, you know, because people are already like, oh, wow. So WWE is literally just about to focus on their celebrities more than they're going to their own talent. It's like, dude, clearly you don't like the business or the direction WWE is going. Just watch AEW. And then again, there's, you know, people going to still watch regardless. Let's be real, you know. But anyways, you know, I don't want to turn this into a war but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the video like i said man i'm gonna be doing my fighter fest predictions later on um you know this afternoon so that's gonna be coming out well i'm actually recording this on a early tuesday morning and then later on we got nxt reviews so i hope you guys enjoyed the video remember to like comment and subscribe this has been the kid dc wrestling and so um yeah